In this video, we will talk about electric potential and potential difference. And these are the concepts which will lead us to an understanding of voltage. So first, I'll explain electric potential and potential difference. And I'll do this by imagining a large negative charge fixed in space and a little positive charge nearby it. Now the negative charge we know attracts the positive charge. Another way to say that is to say that the negative charge produces an electric field around it that is directed inward. So any positive charge is going to be pulled inward toward the negative charge. And that should be obvious to you because opposite charges attract. So imagine this little uh, positive charge here at point A. And let's imagine another point out here at point B that's further away. Now if we just release this little positive charge at point A, it will naturally move to the left because it's attracted to the negative charge. Or we could say the electric field produced by the negative charge pulls it to the left. But suppose we want to get it to move to point B. If we want to do that, we have to push it over to point B. There's a force being exerted on it now to the left by that negative charge. We have to push with a force to the right to get it to move to point B. So we have to push this way. And we exert this force and we push and we push, push. And we get it over there to point B. At that point, we've exerted a force through a distance. And that concept should ring a bell. If you exert a force through a distance, you have done work. Work, remember, is force times distance. So we exert a force F for some distance X. We've done some work. And work is the same thing as energy. So we've expended energy. When we push this, ugh, push it over from A to B, we have expended energy. If you grab that little particle with your hand and you push it, you've expended energy. Energy has left your body. Now here's the question. Where has the energy gone? The energy that we had to expend to push that particle from A to B, where did it go? We know that it didn't simply disappear because energy is conserved. You remember the law of conservation of energy. Energy is not created or destroyed. Where did the energy go? The energy that we used up pushing it from A to B, where did it go? It turns out that it has gone into potential energy. And specifically, we're talking about electrical potential energy. And this is remarkably similar to gravity. If you imagine the surface of the Earth down here, and here's some mass, m, and you want to lift the mass against the force of gravity, then you have to exert some upward force through some distance that you're lifting it. And when you do that, you expend energy, and the energy you expend goes into the mass as potential energy. And specifically, it's gravitational potential energy. It has potential energy because it's at a point of higher potential in the gravitational field that same concept applies electrically. When we push this particle from A to B, we're expending energy, and that energy is going into electrical potential energy. And that particle sitting here at B is at a point of higher electrical potential, a point of higher potential energy in the electric field. And that's a key concept. There's a difference between points A and B. One point represents a point of higher potential en energy than the other. Now we can take this analogy one step further. Let's imagine a mass. Say here's M. You could think of this as the Earth. And here's the gravitational field around the Earth. And the gravitational field is directed inward. So things are pulled toward the Earth. And say here's another little mass, M. Okay, if we lift this mass up to a point of higher potential energy, it has more potential energy. The work that we've done in lifting it has gone into potential energy. If we then release it, what will happen to the mass? Well, the mass will fall. And when it falls, it loses potential energy. And that energy can do two things. It can become kinetic energy. As the mass falls, it picks up speed. Or the energy can become useful work. Now that first, that first statement that it can become kinetic energy, that's pretty obvious. We've all seen masses dropped and sure enough they pick up speed. Things gain speed, as, gain speed as they fall, they're gaining kinetic energy. But how about that second idea, that the, the mass falling when it loses potential energy, that energy could become useful work. That might not be as obvious. 
So let's look at an example. Where, what's an example of a mass falling and doing useful work? Well, here's a pretty simple example. Imagine a water wheel. And you know how a water wheel works. You have a, a chute of some kind that delivers water up to the top. And, and the water is caught in these slats here and the weight of the water pushes down on one side of the wheel and it, it falls out and flows away down here but that causes the wheel to turn and then the axle of this wheel could be hooked over here to say some stones some millstones that rotate to grind some grain or could be hooked into a generator to generate electricity but the point is it's the water the force of the water pushing down as the water falls it loses potential energy and it doesn't pick up as much speed as it otherwise would because the water wheels in the way instead of gaining speed that potential energy gets converted into useful work as this shaft gets rotated so that's an example of mass falling in a gravitational field and the potential energy being converted to useful work the same type of reasoning applies electrically. Let's imagine some charge, we'll call it Q, and it has an electric field around it, and let's imagine an electric field pointing inward, so this would be a negative charge. And then let's imagine a little positive charge here. Well, if we lift the positive charge up to a point of higher potential energy, we do work in lifting it, and the work that we do or the energy that we expend is stored in the charge as potential energy and then if we release it it will fall it will fall down to a point of lower potential energy and it will lose potential energy as it falls and at this point we're talking about electrical potential energy we're lifting it against the force of the electric field and the energy that we expend in doing that is stored as electrical potential energy and when it falls it loses electrical potential energy now two things can happen to that potential energy that it loses as it falls. One, it can become kinetic energy. This charge could just fall back down and gain speed. And then the second thing that could happen is it could become useful work. Now this first case is easy to understand. Um, even though we don't see a charge falling like this every day, we've seen masses fall in gravitational fields and it's very easy to imagine a little charge being accelerated by the electric field. But it might not be so easy to, to um, see work being done, although this happens all the time, all around us. Every electrical device we have in our house uses electrical potential energy, and it gets energy by charges moving from a higher potential energy to a lower potential energy.